This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. We will now continue our examination on the origins of writing, looking at how writing came to be as an early language technology by examining token theory of the origin of writing. In a few moments, we will cover the Rebus Principle and how the Rebus Principle came to be used to create a technique for writing names. But first, let's review. In her document, From Accounting to Writing, Denise Schmant Besserat succinctly presents the token theory of the development of writing in ancient Mesopotamia as follows. For thousands of years in Mesopotamia, tokens were used for accounting purposes, keeping track of such items as units of grain, sheep, and other commodities. As cities developed and more trade ensued, more types of tokens were created. Eventually, clay envelopes were developed as containers to hold tokens. This led to the problem that you couldn't tell what was inside the envelope without breaking it open. To solve this problem, tokens were depressed into the clay on the exterior of the envelope while the clay was still soft, leaving impressions that could be then read. Following this development, tokens were subsequently depressed into clay tablets, giving a mechanism for recording without the use of the tokens themselves to be stored. Later, instead of using tokens to create the impressions in the clay tablet, a stylus was used to etch symbols onto the clay tablet. And eventually, new symbols, such as symbols for numbers, were created. At this point, we have a host of symbols, hundreds of symbols, each representing some commodity, animal, or item. At this point, the need arose to represent names in accounting purposes. In order to solve this need, the Rebus principle was used. The Rebus principle provided a mechanism to go from symbols to names. Let's take a look at the Rebus principle. First of all, what is a rebus? Here is an example of a rebus, a visual puzzle depicting several symbols. Here we have the symbol for an eye, followed by the symbol representing a can of tomatoes, next the symbol representing a wave, and finally, a symbol representing a sheep. What is the solution to this puzzle? It's the English sentence, I can see you. The idea here is that each picture depicts a word, and by saying those words, we end up with a sentence. I can see you. A you is a female sheep. This is an example of using the rebus principle to use symbols to represent language. So how can the rebus principle be used so that the signs developed as part of 
the token accounting process in ancient Mesopotamia could be used to represent names. Well, let's look at this example. Let's say that we wanted to use emojis to represent the English name Herman. Well, take a moment and see if you can figure out why I selected these two emojis. The first is a picture of a woman getting a haircut. The second is a picture of a man. So the first emoji could be representing the English word hair because of the haircut, and the second, the word man. We can then use the rebus principle to say that these two emojis could be used to represent the name Herman. Why? Hair, man, Herman. Let's take a look at another name, Lucas, but this time, instead of using English words, we will use words from ancient Sumeria. So here we have the picture of a man and the picture of a mouth. And in ancient Sumerian, man would have been pronounced Lu and mouth Ka. So Luca could be used to represent the name Lucas. Clearly, the early uses of the rebus principle were not using emojis, but rather using the symbols that had been created during the accounting token period. Thus, by 3000 BC, the rebus principle was used to inscribe names as part of accounting. But what about going beyond accounting? Denise Schmant Besseret argues that in ancient Mesopotamia, names held power. She describes how Mesopotamian religious practices involved the invocation of the names of ancestors. Schmant Besserat quotes an ancient Sumerian king who prayed that my name be established for distant days, that it never falls into oblivion. If the name of a deceased person were to be forgotten, Schmant Besserat describes, it was believed that the ghost of the deceased would haunt the living. We know that over time, technology develops to meet needs. In ancient Mesopotamia, approximately 4,500 years ago, there was a societal need to record names. Thus, we go beyond accounting. Around 2500 BC, by this point, names inscribed using the rebus principle began to appear in Mesopotamian funerary objects. And once names were used, once writing became a media for recording names, not just recording accounting materials, it was then a short step to go from using the rebus principle to record names to the rebus principle to record other words.